Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and I am Frank Williams, and welcome to the Frank Williams Show. My guest today is Delia Chinario. That's right. right. <laughs> she works at the San Francisco Sheriff's Department. She's in the trenches, have been for years, helping women, victim impact, and I'm gonna let her tell you a story. And we're gonna get to know, we're gonna get to know her like right now, ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. talking about real issues in today America. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing great. Well, tell the viewers about yourself. Who are you? Mm. Where do you work at? What you do? And your passion, because you're in the trenches, and we celebrate mm. you. Okay, awesome. First of all, thank you for having me here um, to share, because I think, you know, um, just having, you know, folks that do the work actually share their experiences is really important. Um, so, Wow. Where, where do I even start as far as, um, you know, my passion and why I came here? Well, honestly, let me just back up because this was the last place on this earth that I ever thought I'd be working would be for the San Francisco Sheriff's Department. Um, because I always did want to work with either um, abused children, abused animals, um, or abused women. Never thought I'd be working, you know, in the San Francisco Sheriff's Department doing that, but then how I came in as actually working with abusive men. Um, and that was not what I had originally planned to do. Um, I originally wanted to be, um, go to school and be a therapist. Um, but, you know, what I figured out, you know, in learning a lot about violence and the impact of violence and that violence is a social issue, not an individual issue, kind of changed my thinking. And then um, I was working for a managed care company and um, providing support for folks that were getting therapy and assistance. And I just, I just didn't like the individual approach. And I knew that that's not what the direction that I wanted to go. And then I, um, you know, met um, Hamish Sinclair, um, who was, you know, doing Man Alive and actually um, invited me to be part of their program when they started the RSVP program um, at the county jail. And so then it was just really interesting because what originally did happen is some of the folks that I was working with, um, you know, got a little upset with me because they they felt that I was putting a lot of energy and my passion into um, working with men, and certain folks had an issue with that. But to really understand that if we addressed not only men's violence, you know, to helping men stopping their violence, um, that we would I I would ultimately working with my passion of violence, stopping violence against women and children and, and animals. And then the larger piece for me was really um, when I got involved in restorative justice, because that's why I can work in the Sheriff's Department, because the work that they do around restorative justice. And it just broadened my whole experience and my whole training and understanding how violence impacts us all and how the misconception of the people that are incarcerated, um, of you know, having people incarcerated and locking them up and thinking that we're throwing away the key and we're never going to be harmed again. I mean, that's all a myth of, you know, of what really happens and understanding that folks that are in incarcerated also have been harmed, um, everybody. And in the 17 years that I've been working in the jails, there's not one person Either, either male or female that I haven't met that hasn't been a victim of something. And I say that also not to excuse the fact that they can't use the excuse that they've been victimized um, to harm others. Um, but it's our responsibility to provide the tools and information for them to um, change their behavior. And that whole concept, and my men, you know, my two mentors have been Sonny Schwartz and Hamish Sinclair in working, you know, in developing my um, my training and my beliefs and my understanding and challenging, you know, what I how I grew up um, and what I believe to be true. So, how long have you been working for the San Francisco Sheriff Department? Um, so, for the actual department now, it's been about 15 years. And I came in through the nonprofit of Man Alive, and then I worked for Community Works for um, a little while, and then I was hired on, um, you know, in the Sheriff's Department to actually run the Survivor Restoration Program. 
So tell us about the Survivor Restoration Program. Um, how did you end up putting it together? And uh, tell us about the success and challenges of working with that department. Okay. Well, um, you know, it's it's it all it kind of stemmed out from our Resolve to Stop the Violence program, um, the RSVP program, which had a portion of it was the survivor restoration. So when we're doing restorative justice, we want to make sure that we're providing services for offenders to change their behavior and hold them accountable, but also provide services for survivors um, equally, right, and then involve the community. So I was in charge and hired to develop the survivor restoration program within RSVP, which, and I'll talk about in a moment, around survivor impact. But in that, um, you know, over the years, I've been over that particular um, program now for about 15 years, and it's no longer just a program within RSVP. It's actually an individual sheriff's department program now. So we provide services throughout the whole department. We have a lot of community collaborations, and we do a lot of trainings and outreach and education around um, restorative justice, um, battery treatment programs, um, survivor programs, um, and empowerment programs. So um, the other piece of that is the survivor impact, and that's where um, I have relationships with about 150 survivors that are survivors of violent crimes that come in and share their story to the men in our program to get the men to really understand the full impact of their violence um, that has a ripple effect. Um, so when you say survivors, tell us a little bit more about that because you even have some Mm -hmm. personal relationships with some of them yeah. and turned them into speakers as well, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually have the most amazing um, speaker panels and, and folks that I work with. They are survivors of domestic violence, um, sexual assaults, um, moms and dads of murdered children. Um, I also have, you know, victims who have lost um, loved ones to drinking and driving, home invasion, carjackings. Um, but I also bring in ex-offenders that have totally changed their life around and um, are giving back to their community. And they also come in because it gives the men that we're working with in our program hope and also to know that you can change your life no matter what you have done, that you can change your life. And um, I do have personal relationships with almost all my speakers because these are individual men and women that have completely went against all odds and where they have every right to be angry and to turn around and harm other people they're making choices not to do that not to continually you know escalate um the violence or retaliate with the violence you know about the violence so that's probably the i mean i have i wear many hats in the department but that is absolutely my most favorite day mm -hmm. because not only do I see the transformation with the survivor speakers that come in, mm -hmm. but I also see that transformation with um, our clients that are incarcerated because they get a full understanding of the impact they're having, even if they haven't done what, you know, they, they, they haven't done what some of our speakers are sharing about, but then just the understanding that them being incarcerated is impacting their family, mm -hmm. right? And how do we support them not to continue that violence? How do we support them to understand that their children need them at home, that they're missing out on holidays and schools, and, and um, that their children are at higher risk because of their incarceration? How do we stop that? And in saying that, you know, in the full realm of the program, we also have a day for them to understand how the fact that they have been harmed that they're continuing that cycle. Mm -hmm. So that's where my passion is, right? It's not just working with survivors. It's not just working with the offender. It's working with both and then involving the community, you know, and giving opportunities to both, right? Mm -hmm. So that if we have, you know, someone who's making a commitment to, you know, change their lives, um, you know, stop drinking, get off drugs, get their high school diploma, stop their violence. They're doing all these things finally, and then they come out and they, they can't get a job. Then, you know, we have to work with the community to be able to give them resources and opportunities for them. Otherwise, it's easier to take that other route. Well, it's interesting because you work with violent offenders as well as offenders for other reasons, well, like you said, alcohol and drug related mm -hmm. as well. 
and it's it's a big shift uh, in the correlation of those that use alcohol and drugs um, who have also had been victimized once mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. once upon a time within their life uh, or upbringing, mm-hmm. correct? Mm-hmm. Right. And then at the same time became the victimizer, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? And masking that with alcohol and drugs, which bring out more of that anger and violence within right. a person because of frustration and, and all yeah. the things they done went through. So how do you feel when... Um, you get it from all sides. And what I mean by that, right, is that, okay, here you are on one hand, you work for the sheriff department, one of your duties is, you know, it's about the safety of the public, correct? Then you're working with violent offenders, right, in which most people want to write them off for, right. for gun. Yeah. Like, yeah. there is no uh, rehabilitation, mm-hmm. right? They don't deserve any rehabilitation, which, in fact, um, Part of the criminal justice system rehabilitation was, in fact, was to use uh, punitive, mm-hmm. you know, type of, uh, what's the word for it? Where it's punitive, right? right? It's, right. It wasn't supposed to be no real rehabilitation, right? right? right. Um, in which you come in, right, wearing all these different hats, you know, and then you have to deal with those who are the victims and mm-hmm. and you watch them share and you... You watch them cry and you watch them relive this pain they didn't went through. But how do you feel when you get it from all sides? Like, and I mean from the negative side, mm-hmm. like how could you ever like represent this population or how could you even, what about even putting them together in the mm-hmm. same room, mm-hmm. 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 which we know is very spiritual, but for the public at large yeah. may yeah. not feel that way. Yeah. Well, first of all, I say bring it on. Okay. Right. I say bring on the negativity. I bring bring on the the hurt, bring on everything, right? Because I understand it, right? I'm a survivor of some horrific crimes in my childhood and that's ultimately what brought me to this work, right? A lot of people don't know that about me. Um, you know, some do, but you know, I I come with a lot of passion. So I'm one of those people that could easily have been an orange. Mm-hmm. And I always tell folks when they're judging the people who are incarcerated that we are all only one decision away ever in our life of ending up in orange. You can make a decision to drink and drive. You know, you can make a decision to hit your partner. You can make a decision to go off on road rage. Um, you can make a decision to steal something. One decision, right? And... I was very fortunate at the age of 16. I was a very I had come from a very uh, you know hard upbringing and there were people that stepped into my life that you know helped me. But when from 16 until about, you know, 20 or so, you know, I was a really really angry person, right? But I kept a lot of that inside. Um and I could have easily made different choices, but I had I was lucky enough that I had some resources and some people that really loved me and took me in. A lot of our folks haven't had that. Um, and if I didn't have that, I had so much trauma, I could have easily used drugs and alcohol to mask that trauma. So when I'm walking into the jails and I'm, when I'm talking to people, whether I'm walking in the jail, if I'm talking to people in corporate offices that I'm trying to get funding for you know, our clients or whatever that is, um, I understand. I meet them where they're at. I understand. I see deputized staff, you know, some, some, you know, really support programs, some don't ha- understand it, right? I get it. Um, and I don't hit them over the head, you know, with a hammer. I, I explain to them, you know, of, of the fact is that the, the myth of that when someone does something wrong, that they're going to go to jail and we don't have to worry about them anymore, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are some cases like that, you know, some people that do some really horrific things, but the majority, these are our community, our family, our own children, our neighbors, our friends, people that we know, right? And they're coming back to our families, to our communities. And if we don't do, if we don't do the work that we're doing with the folks while we have them incarcerated or opportunities, then they're just going to continue that cycle, right? And then carry that on. So I can see the bigger picture, um, but... It was really interesting. I'll tell this one story. Um, we were doing an RSVP program in Winchester, New York jail, 
out there and uh, we're walking in I'm walking in with Sonny and Hamish and a few other people and there was this deputy a uh, sheriff or correction officer there and he to me he was like eight feet tall he was really big guy you know and he sees us coming in and he looks down at me I'm like hi we're here from San Francisco right mm -hmm. and you know we get called you know the the glamour slammer you know the the thug huggers and you know I mean that's you know and I get it right, right. and um, because they don't know they understand the full picture and so he looks down and he goes he goes oh so you guys are the ones here from San Francisco and he's looking down at me and I'm looking up at him and, <laughs> and I'm like yeah he goes well, you know, I, I forgot exactly what he said. He goes, well, I don't believe that this stuff works. And, you know, he goes, good luck. And, you know, people don't change. And he just like all this kind of stuff. And I just met this guy. I mean, I'm just like looking up. Right. And he looked down, right? And all I said to him, and I, and I go, I go, so how long have you been here? He goes, I've been here for almost 30 years, right? And I said, okay. I go, so apparently what you've been doing all here for 30 years isn't working either because your recidivism is pretty high right wow. and I go so if you just give us a chance you know I go maybe what we're doing here is something a little bit different right so I'm not saying that what we're gonna do is gonna work 100% but what you've been doing isn't working either so let's come together and work together and see with with your stuff and my stuff that we can bring it exactly. together right? right and he just looked at me and I just like smiled back at him right but I didn't really take him on it was just like come on you know just trying to get him on my team a little bit mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's the you know over the years that's what I've had to do is um, because I have and I am I mean there's certain folks that will only want to work with offenders there's folks that will only work with survivors and i get that you have to know what you're comfortable with like that i'm very comfortable walking in both worlds mm -hmm. because as someone who's had family members who have offended and harmed mm -hmm. right and um knowing that they needed help and for me being a survivor that if i didn't get the help I know how important it is. And I also can look inside. And again, I'm not making excuses for people's behaviors of harming another, mm -hmm. but I, I understand it. I have empathy for it, um, knowing that hurt people will hurt people. And if we don't go in and start healing the people that have been harmed, you know, victims become perpetrators exactly. very easily. There's so much trauma. There's so much mental health issues. And if we don't address all that, we're just... We're just creating more and more. So, I mean, that's, you know, and, and I do, I, I, I do get it. Um, from, I do get it from a different directions, um, you know. So. so you just had recently, um, and I want to get a little bit more into that before we leave this evening, but um, you also every year do this big thing with the Giants at the Giants Park, don't yes. you? You're a yeah. big Giant yeah. fan. You love baseball. Mm -hmm. And you <laughs> also get to use one of your joy as a tool to touch yeah. other people. Yeah. So what yeah. is that and yeah. the event that you do? There? So we do, um, um, actually, Sunny Schwartz started that out with the San Francisco Giants, and I've been blessed to be part of it now. I think it's like 16, 17 years now, um, where we c have a collaboration with the San Francisco Giants, a strikeout violence day. Mm -hmm. And so we get to have um, our survivors out on the field and um, throw out the first pitch, and we also have ex-offenders on the field, and along with Futures Without Violence and a whole bunch of different other agencies like La Casa de las Madres. And we just come together and celebrate um, and talk to people about stopping their violence. So that's been something, you know, of course, you know, people know that I am, you know, a big baseball fan. Don't ask me who the, the players are because um, <laughs> I get teased about that all the time. I just love, I love the game. Um, but... You know, it's just bringing up awareness because you figure like there's what 40, 50,000 people in the ballpark, and for one full day we we talk about violence, and we are particularly focused on young boys, because we truly believe that you know if we start teaching our young boys at a at a um, you know at at a young age, then violence is learned, right, and it can be unlearned. So, yeah. Yeah. So working with. Um working with um, survival impact as well, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, 
can you tell us a little something? Give us a story. Like, give us one of your stories about oh um, a person that you brought in to say RSVP okay. to talk and yeah. tell them what RSVP is, okay. right? The type of people that's held in there within the San Francisco County Jail. And then mm -hmm. give us mm -hmm. one of your examples yeah. because you didn't touch many lives. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you are really in the trenches, and we salute you. Go Thank ahead. you. So, RSVP, Resolve to Stop the Violence. Um, program and I was excited because um, earlier today we were at the City Hall because um, I'm also on I'm the board president of, of our Five Keys Charter High School and we just received the Innovations in Government Award and that's a very prestigious award and I'm so proud of the school proud of our teachers and everybody involved and back in 2005 um, we won the Innovations in Government Award for our RSVP program which is also exciting I mean to be part of a pro, you know, a department that has received two innovations and governments award is an absolute um, blessing. So in RSVP, oh my God, if I had to t pick one story, there I have several, but um, I think when we talk about restorative justice, there's a couple that that really stick out, and one is. Um, in, I can say her name because she speaks publicly and she was actually one of our speakers that was on um, Oprah, was uh, Sue Solis, who her, um, her, you know, her husband had hired a, um, a hitman to kill her and um, it, he didn't, he, he, was, he shot her but the gun jammed and wasn't, didn't finish the job. So long story short um, she ended up in the hospital a lot of trauma um, her children were very young um, and then she ended up being becoming a probation officer and during that time later on the the perpetrator who actually shot her contacted her and she was a little freaked out at first um, and we're talking like you know almost seven 16 17 years later contacted her and she went to a, um, and she spoke with him for a little bit, but he still had time to do. And she went to a um, conference on restorative justice and met another one of my coworkers, George Duran, and really was interested in learning more about restorative justice. And we all came together, myself, Sunny, George, um, Sue Solis, her children, and the perpetrator. We did it over a summer where we, we came together and we brought both parties, her family, his family. You know, we did it in stages. It's a very long process. And actually had them come together and speak and, and talk. So here he had to be accountable in front of her children of what he did, what his part was, what he had done along with his family. We actually had them both come in to RSVP at the same time to share their story, which was a really powerful because here you have, you know, a victim who was shot and almost died and here you have the perpetrator who actually shot took that shot and it was a really healing process um, for our survivor and the survivor's family and actually Dale's family to his daughter and because um, his daughter was a, a baby when that happened so we got to really understand the full um, circle of what had happened and there had been a lot there was a lot more healing over the years even after that um, with Sue's children Wow, that's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's God's work, and you in there doing it. And we mm -hmm. really salute you for the work that you do. Um, I'm kind of speechless with that one, but it's something that, you know, our audience need to hear about, you know, that mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. work that we are mm -hmm. doing in the San Francisco Sheriff's Department, or the work that you're doing in the San Francisco Sheriff's Department is working. Uh, sorry about that. Mm -hmm. But... I want to thank you because we only got two minutes left. So within that two minutes, what I would like is for you to let them know um, for people who's dealing with violence and for those who may have someone incarcerated or for mm -hmm. somebody that's a victim of violence, how do they contact your office? How do mm -hmm. they contact your support mm -hmm. where they can get support? Yeah. Well, the best way, it all depends. You know, we're fortunate that, you know, in our department, we have so many different programs. If if your loved one, a family member, or someone you know that's incarcerated that wants services um, to, you know, have them fill out um, what we call an action request form, 
But to encourage that person, we have so many programs. We have our Five Keys Charter School. If you don't have your high school diploma, we have our Roads to Recovery. If you need help with substance abuse, RSVP, violence, we have parenting classes. You know, if you just actually, if you go on our website, and the San Francisco Sheriff's Department website, you can see all the different programs that we have. Um, now, if you're on the outside, you know, if you, if you have, there's, you know, we are fortunate. We have so many resources in San Francisco. Um, but you, again, you can just look on the website. There, all the numbers are there um, for survivor restoration. And you know, the the most important thing is that you know what brings me to this work and, and the passion is just really understanding the impact and that everybody can have a part in supporting change. So it's like, you know, you just have to find what you're most comfortable in. There's so much, I mean, I don't care if it's mentoring. I don't care if it's, you know, working with the offenders, if it's working with survivors, if it's volunteering, if it's organizing programs. There's so much to be done, and people are so hungry for that. Um, and just know what your passion is, and you can, and you can, you can give back, right, mm -hmm. to make that change in, you know, in everything that we need. I mean, our youth needs us, so. Well... I want to thank you for coming here, you know, for being our guest this evening. And for those of you that's out there looking and tuning in, uh, Frank Williams and our guest for the day is Delia Chinario. <laughs> and so um, we want to thank her, and I hope you guys have uh, was able to learn a little more about some of the programs that go on within the San Francisco uh, Sheriff Department. Uh, Delia, like I said, been working in the trenches for many years. She told she had 15 years here at the San Francisco Sheriff's Department, working with uh, victim of violent crimes, working with um, uh, RSVP, you know, uh, working with victim impact and restored under this restorative justice model that we have here. And she's been doing a fantastic job, her staff, her crew. I mean, she is awesome all the way to uh, strike out the violence in which I had an opportunity to even bring my daughter and go out to that over the past weekend, mm -hmm. and we had a lot of fun. So we want to thank you for coming in again. Thank you. And um, for those of you that have anyone that's incarcerated within the San Francisco County Jail, like she said, you can have them put in an action request to get some services that they may need while they in so they can be ready for reentry when they come out and hit the pavement and and go out there and do what they need to be done become a successful citizen. Once again, thank you for tuning in and have a good evening. Sing it! Open my mind with the truth Open my mind with the truth Open my mind with the truth Now I'm gonna let